Oh, it's just the way you can just drop in to little turns like that and really get the back end sliding and stepping out. Very on e-bike like, really agile. Yes. My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional mountain bike and kit tester for nearly 25 years. And today, the bike I'm live ride reviewing is YT's Decoy Elite e-bike. So that's the older decoy uh, with the Steps E8000 motor in it. But I still think it's really relevant and it's still on sale. So let's hit the trail. So in terms of paint by numbers, you've got two shock shuttle settings. So obviously slapped it in low and slack, which means 64 and a half degree head, 75.5 degree seat tube and 442 mil PB height, which is relatively tall. But the really distinctive thing about this one decoy, in terms of modern geometry, how short it is. So 449 reach for this large, which is a medium on most progressively shaped bikes now. And means, you know, there's definitely some kind of stance issues about where you plant yourself. All right. But the bonus side of that is if you're taking on brand new super tight trails, then you've got real short wheelbase maneuverability and flickability on this YT. So yeah, definitely more of a, an advanced rider's bike rather than someone who just wants something raked out for going flat out and straight on. But the real win in terms of this system is this virtual force suspension, especially with this big Fox X2 air can control in it. It feels absolutely sublime on this loam fest. And then you've got 170 mil fork up front, full on Fox 38 factory to match that 165 at the rear. And while you've got the older Steps E8000 motor with 7000 switch gear and a monochrome 7000 display, to save a bit of money. It's still a really solid motor. Yeah, the walk mode's not as good. It's not as easy to tune. And it's not as powerful as the latest Bosch or Bros, etc. But you know what you're getting. And it's dependable. And because it's less powerful, you're going to get more runtime out of that custom. 540 watt YT battery. It's under that big bash plate on the down tube. So from that point of view, it's definitely worth a look. But the other bonus is, because this has the older motor, the spec you're getting for the money is way better than the EPA equivalent. So you're getting carbon crank brothers wheels and you're getting fox transfer factory dropper post rather than alloy wheels and yt's own brand dropper post plus it's 500 quid cheaper so that's got to be i mean those carbon synthesis wheels alone getting on two grand so you're getting like 1,500 quid's worth of kit upgrade, minimal, for 500 quid less. Just because you're getting an older motor that you know works and doesn't have the clunk of EPA either. And of course, the other big maneuverability asset on this bike, on the really tight stuff, is the fact that it's mullet. So, 27 and a half inch rear wheel, 
29 front. So you've got that cutting ability of the taller front wheel and then the cushioning and grip and the tighter scrub patch of the smaller rear wheel. And they really have maxed out that mullet capacity on the back. It's a full 2.8 inch Minion DHR you've got there. And then Asagai 2.5 up front, which is why there's some bounce going on off the crud fender. But like I say, at least it's not the motor that's creating that hideous noise. So, and that 38 there, as you can see, I mean, you know, 20 plus kilo, 23 kilos of e-bike off the section. I should have hit harder, or at least lifted the nose more. And zero complaints. But that tire size and grip does mean you do get some drag when you come off the top of the motor's power band. But, you know, they've hedged their bet slightly. They've not gone super tacky and they've not gone double D either. The rear is XO plus and both tires running Max Terra uh, off my foot compound. So uh, it's just the way you can just drop in to little turns like that and really get the back end sliding and stepping out. Very on e-bike like, really agile. Yes. So in conclusion, there's definitely, you know, more twitch and more turn going on naturally with this front end compared to a slacker, a longer bike. So it's kind of anti-fashion in that sense. But the ironic thing is, of course, most of us, certainly since lockdown, are riding a lot tighter, twistier, <laughs> agile trails where a bike like this absolutely loves it. It really comes alive. Just the way that back end, I'm just riding the front fork, but that back end always just curling inside, never stepping out. I often get caught out down here because of a long back end or a bike that's too long, but even with the extra weight of the battery and the motor, this is tucking in beautifully, properly playing with these big Maxxis side knobs. So yeah, for fun, agile riding, which is where the real thrills are, unless you're a proper speed demon. Then this decoy, yeah, it's different, but in a really good way if you like your riding, riding radical and twisty. And guess what the other folks in the reviews have said is true. Ignore the numbers, just embrace the ride. And even with that 2.8 inch tire in the back, they've still gone short on the chain stays for an e-bike, so 442 mil, but it's the same across all sizes, so there's nothing clever going on there. But that means Again, not just more kind of tuck and twist, bend those rental bars right over agility. It also means a nice fast reaction from that back end. So it feels really sensitive. It's really well protected, top to spec bearings in what's basically pretty neutral suspension setup. So it just feels really, really agile. It's a while since I've ridden an e-bike around Stainburn and it is loose and drifty but every little loose turn on this it's really nice to be able to turn in and then know that the bike is going to drift out really predictably and if anything the back end is going to turn tighter rather than oversteer so and of course you've got a bit of kick to launch stuff Yes, this is great round here. And it is, you know, quite distinctive to ride compared to, I mean, not compared to older bikes, obviously, because the reach is similar to how mountain bikes used to be. But you do have to kind of get more mobile and dynamic with it, rather than just being sat in the center in kind of that handling hammock that a longer reach bike gives you. But Obviously there's a load of stability from that head angle anyway. And then 
76 degree seat gives you plenty of climbing pies and just the way it's that little bit more compact just makes it eminently more chuckable and I was surprised how whoop, <laughs> how much it enjoys slinging low through a corner as well because it is pretty high but that means you can keep your pedal going even when you're leaning it in which of course because this E8000 has a slightly more limited rev range pickup it's really important to keep that speed up on twisty climbs like this and because the battery's a little bit smaller it's obviously a little bit lighter as well so when it comes to hop and play situations but ah <laughs> it loves because again it's a relatively long stem as well 50 mil equivalent this rental but kind of works with the handling it is you know maybe put a short one on but certainly doesn't feel like that spectral on I had with that combined bar which was near a 60 mil you know it still gets the jaw <laughs> he says I knew he was going to slide out just going to clip the pedal there just let it drift but it still heals over like really well like I say and there's so much grip even though it's only a Max Terra compound on that acid guy on these synthesis rims because these wheels are beautiful you've got that slightly more flexible front that stiffer rear on these carbon wheels super fast reaction i9 hubs as well i just underline that agility and control superbly happy days and even this older model it's a hell of a package for the money well, I if anything this is the better value bike and it's certainly still an absolute ton of fun there's no way all well, this is feels kind of obsolete or outdated this is still proper pinner but doesn't mind getting rowdy over the rocks either because what it lacks in length it really makes up for in suspension control so yeah definitely a different cut but still a really valid bike and amazing value too and stop here i love fox love. yeah kind of said everything i need to as well so massive thanks to yt for the loan of the decoy elite uh, apologies to them for keeping it so long they actually brought out the new bike while I still had this one but it's in a ton of use and everybody's ridden it has really really enjoyed it whether they're relative novice riders who've just really liked the way it's looked after them and it's just and actually a lot of them preferred that shorter reach and kind of more compact feel but also you know I know a lot of really really super experienced properly rad riders who absolutely rave about this bike uh, and I'm not surprised having ridden it you know up here and all my favorite trails it feels so sorted you know from suspension to even the numbers you don't think will make will work on the trail the whole package just works really really well and then the spec for the money is outstanding so although it's officially an out-of-date bike definitely still worth a look as they're still available so massive thanks to YT huge thanks to my channel sponsor Giro Cycling UK uh, as you can see, helmets, gloves, goggles, uh, 
shirt, this roused wavy kit, uh, gloves, shirt and socks. Uh, there'll be a coupon code for subscribers coming out soon. Uh, that'll be on YouTube and on Instagram. So I'll talk through that on a separate video very quick, shortly. And massive thanks to those guys for their support and to PT's products and to Crud products as well. And there's some other sponsors in the pipeline, which is awesome. Thanks again to uh, my Patreon subscribers who get behind the channel on a monthly basis with a small pledge and they get early, extended and behind the scenes edits and add free cuts as a thank you so if you really like what i'm doing on the channel please consider subscribing on patreon and supporting me there but for now uh subscribe click for notifications uh give the ch give the video a thumbs up uh make sure you check out the unboxing which has more of an up close and uh, sort of detailed tech view of the bike uh i won't bother doing a tech talk because i've kind of already covered it there uh also i'll link that at the end but for now i've been guy kesteven on guy case tv ragging around stainburn on the uh, YT Decoy Elite. Oh, and uh, there's a series of Stainburn Trails videos as well, if you like the look of the riding that I've been doing today. Cheers.